from the creators who brought you RuPaul's Drag Race and Million Dollar Listing. This is World of Wonders Wow Report. Things that make us go wow. Welcome one and all. This is the Wow Report. I am Tom Campbell, here with Jane St. James. Hello, darling. Hello, Jane St. James. Blake Jacobs, our millennial producer, has hi, hi. popped from behind the camera to the desk because our here. fearless leader, Fenton Bailey, is halfway around the globe. He's actually in London uh, for RuPaul's DragCon UK, which is happening right now in, yep. the, in the UK. So if you're listening to us in London, Pu push pause and rush out to RuPaul's Drag Race. <laughs> you can still get tickets at RuPaul'sDragCon.com. Thank you, Blake. Now, each and every week, we count down the top 10 things that make us go, wow. wow. And this week is no different. So let's jump right in at number 10. That's you. Number 10. Oh, hi. Tom Campbell here. Um, I am officially obsessed with Tanya Tucker. Oh, yeah, you have yeah. been talking about yeah. her a lot these past few weeks. She is, the Grammys are when? Very soon. Very soon. She is nominated for four Grammys. Nice. You know, Tanny Tucker, and I'm surprised how many people don't know who Tanny Tucker is. You know Tanny Tucker Of course. Is. You know who Tanny yeah. Tucker is. She started off when she was 13, first hit song, Delta Dawn, 1973, 74. She's had a 47 year career, and I flew to Nashville to see her. I've never been to Nashville before. That was fun. Oh, really? Yeah. Wait, when did you go? I, I left Saturday and I came back Monday. What? To see Tanya Tucker perform headline. Wait, but didn't you just see her at, at the? I saw her at the Troubadour here yes, in LA uh -huh. and I fell in love again. Uh -huh. And so I went to the Rhyme. I went in line to see where she's playing. So I went to the Ryman. Was which, it the same show? It, it was better because it was Tanya Tucker and Friends. It was the first time Tanya Tucker had headlined the Ryman Auditorium. The Ryman Auditorium, and I know all this because of the Ken Burns Country Western Music right, sure. document, <laughs> five-part uh -huh. documentary, was the home of the Grand Ole Opry before they yeah, had to move. Sure. And it used to be a tabernacle, and it is, it is the mother church of country music. Yes. She had never headlined before. Oh, wait, didn't Dolly She just... had never headlined well, that, before. That's crazy. That's insane. That's, that, that's bananas. That's bonkers. <laughs> Thank you. But isn't that that's where um, Dolly just did her show from? That, that was um, over Christmas. She had the she had a, a special, and it was Maybe, from the Rhyland. Probably. I think it, so. It, it's a very special place. Yeah. And Nashville's a very special place. The music's coming out of every window. And so she comes out, and she goes, the Troubadour was amazing, but I now have been listening to Tanya's music. I mean, it's, it's beautiful. She... The, Rolling Stone, don't trust me, trust Rolling Stone, uh, reminded that she proved once again that she is the female Elvis. Oh. And that is a title that Elvis gave her himself. What? That's the thing, because they, because they, she's so kind of sexual and out there. I mean, she's older now, but like she's just got this charisma and every, like, kind of like Elvis. Does she wiggle her hips? Everything she does, everything that comes out of her mouth in terms of singing is the truth. And there's that quote from the uh, the documentary is like country music three chords and the truth. But Tanya Tucker makes every song her own. You believe everything she's saying, and um, and so she kept having people in the most nonchalant way kind of just roll out. Billy Joe Shaver. These are people that I've had to sort of look up. But Billy Joe Shaver is like one of the best country western writers of all time. Uh -huh. He's 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 missing fingers. Um, she had Dennis Quaid come out, who's been writing a song that she recorded with Chris Christopherson. She knows Chris Christopherson. Sure. And um and uh, she had uh, Lee and Womack came out at one point. Oh, I uh, love Lee. They dance. Yes, yes. Yeah, so they, they, but they would just pop out and sort of sing a duet with her. There's a, a, a artist named Johnny Rodriguez who look at this picture. He's just now he's like this little little old sweet man. Yeah. Uh -huh. He had had a, and I, I listened to um, on Sirius XM 559, it's, it's Willie's Roadhouse, uh -huh. and those, all these artists were played there, uh -huh. and Tanya had him come out, and you know, Tanya's still like- Outlaw the, country. Yes, and he, no, that's different. This is Roadhouse, oh. Willie's Roadhouse, okay. 60s and 70s, and he sang his heart out, and Tanya pointed out, she goes, we had our first hit the same year. In 1973, and we we toured every honky tonk in Texas, and and here he is sit, standing beside her all these years later at her first the first thing. She's just thanking everybody. At one point, she's like she sang two sparrows in a hurricane. I love that song. Which That's is, from my era, yes, Tanya. Which can be a really sappy song. It starts off like um, she, uh, she's 15 and he barely he's barely driving a car, and it's all about a marriage. It goes on, and the last verse is like she's 83. And he's barely driving a car. Oh. And she said, I, she goes, I dedicate, I, I sang this at my parents' 50th wedding anniversary. And she points out into this beautiful, she goes, and my dad was sitting right there because her dad's not there anymore. And just everything was just so heartfelt. I'm not, I hope I'm communicating it. So then she goes, I'm about to sing a song because she tells great stories too. Because I never sang this song before. Boom, boom, boom. It's achy, breaky heart. Who comes out? 
Billy, Billy Ray Cyrus. And so they do that together. And then Billy Ray Cyrus sings, what's the one with uh, Lil Nas? Oh, uh, Old Town Road. He sings Old Town Road, and she does a Lil Nas rap. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to God. <laughs> anyway, it was... Uh, well, no, but tell me a little bit about Nashville, because I've never been to Nashville well, before. And did you, you get got to, to meet her, didn't you? I did. There's a picture of me, and I went to bed with Tanya Tucker in her tour bus. Ooh, um, how did you get on the tour bus, I'm you mess groupie? Up names. There's a, uh, uh, Brett McLaughlin, who writes a lot of the music for RuPaul's Drag Race, RuPaul's Drag Race uh-huh. Live, we're going to talk about it, who goes by the name Leland, that's his performing name, he went to uh, music school at Belmont in Nashville. Never knew about it, but it's a really good school. He met a guy named Elliot Thomas there, who's a realtor in, in Nashville, who we just so happened to be doing like a reel with, you know, a, a, for a sh- TV show. I s- hooked up with him for brunch. I was in Nashville for 24 hours. Um, and he said, you know, and Nashville's a small town. He started like, he goes, I know her makeup artist. And so he started texting her naked stars. And then I had a free ticket because I also brought my cousin Ben Fuller. Uh, you should look him up. Ben Fuller is a great country western artist who's starting out. And we, he was, he, I'm so glad I brought my cousin Ben, who's from Vermont, and we grew up together, but he's, he's younger than me. He's my cousin's kid. Uh, he teared up during songs because he, he was the perfect person to bring. Cause That's me. awesome. Yeah. And so uh, we get brought back. We're waiting in the alley. There's all these celebrities. And, we find, and the guy goes, I have two more people. He brought his sister. He brought me. And we go back. And Tanya, and I, I loathe going backstage. I loathe because I just I have such empathy for the performer. Like they don't need right. me. There's no way that Tanny's gonna get. You want to meet them way more yes, than I want to meet you. But she was gracious. Dennis Quaid was like interrupting me because he was making dinner deal, and we sat down in her bed. And we took a picture, and it came out pretty good. That did, yeah. Um, uh, and uh, Tay and Tay, Tom and Tanya. So look for Tanya at the at the yes at the. Uh, Grammys, wish her most luck. Although she kept saying, she goes, the best award I could ever get is right here in this room. I mean, she's <laughs> so amazing. Has been up and down and knows all the things that she's never, I don't think she's ever had this kind of heat um, and respect. And uh, so do that. And, and, and if you're in New York on February, Friday, February 7th, I'm going to see her at the townhouse one more time. Okay, Woo-hoo! I'm a stalker now. Push the stalker. <laughs> Tanny Tucker stalker. Oh my gosh. All right. All right. Um, you are a groupie. Thank you. I am. Thank you for, uh, for indulging me. Let's move on now to number nine. Number nine. Number nine, uh, NBC, Zoe's Extraordinary Playlist, which debuted this week, or last week. Um, it stars Jane Levy, who we love. Remember from Suburgatory? Remember oh, I she, did love Suburgatory. She is so cute. She's um, Was uh, she the like main girl in Suburgatory? Yes, she was the main girl in Suburgatory. I Suburgatory. forgot about that show. Yeah, yeah. Well, she, she's back. <laughs> and she plays a girl who is, she's sort of shy and introverted, and she has, she's having headaches. And she goes in for an MRI, and as as she's in the MRI, the big one hits in LA, and she's trapped in the MRI. And as, as she's, <laughs> as there's an earthquake, and something happens to her when she gets out. When they finally get her out, she has the ability to see into people's heads and to he- know what they're feeling, and they express it as a song. So it's like uh, she'll be. Now wa- this just sounds. A little well, no, 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 no. It Stay sounds like she's a gay superhero. Is what she sounds like a, 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 a musical theater. We, we have a gay superhero coming up in a few minutes. So let's so not much to look forward to. <laughs> deep time, deep time. Deep time. Yeah. So, but anyway, um, the cast is absolutely incredible. Mary Steenburgen is her mother. From Little Rock. Peter P- Peter Gallagher is her father. Oh, um, Lauren Graham from Gilmore Girls is her boss. She works at this sort of startup, and everybody there is sort of hip. But wherever she goes, and you think this is a very thin premise. I, I hear you fighting uh-huh. it already because I know how you are. Well, and you know how I am about, like, music. <laughs> But anyway, so um, <laughs> couldn't have said it better, James. <laughs> but this is done really. It's really clever. The writing is really crisp and fun and funny, and you laugh hysterically. You love all the characters, and they like you know. She wakes up in the morning. She looks out, and everybody's singing. You know, here comes the sun, and they, it's like a big, huge musical number. It's um all. It's mostly songs from the '60s, '70s, and '80s. Well, I'm right here for right, it. Right. I think because that you can. There's probably yeah. cheaper. Right. Rights to yeah, that. yeah, the yeah. rights are probably, but they do have you know like I'm a sucker for you, you know, and like like <laughs> yeah. the, the boy at work is like who has a crush on so her. So it's kind of like for gleeks. Well, it it's is like a new. But you know the thing is because um, there have been a lot a lot of tries. People uh, 
Yeah. My crazy ex girlfriend was a musical. Crazy ex girlfriend, cop rock. If you remember <laughs> back in the day, oh, yeah, the tip of my tongue, <laughs> cop rock. <laughs> and then Glee, Glee did you know was was six seasons, yes, whatever. Bottled it, and and, and ex, my crazy ex girlfriend was a success. In its... Yeah, people went bananas yes. for that. This I think has a chance to really break out bigger because crazy ex girlfriend was sort of a cult favorite. Yeah, I think. but not for like five years or something. Yeah, right? yeah. Um, it's it's. Um, I love the idea of. The, I've just seen the the promos, and I obviously execution is everything, but. I live like this, and I'm not being yeah. sarcastic. No, I like, know. I walk out like are you always telling me to stop singing because you can't afford it here. <laughs> but like we can't monetize. But I, I always a, a song always hits me like a mood. Totally. Yeah, you mm. know. And, and I, I get that. And I sing, and I'm the kind of person who will be walking down the street singing like in the happiest day of my life, like with, and people will be like, "Stop singing! You're embarrassing me." I'm like, "Oh please, oh please!" Well, this is, this is actually, Every this day is, before this really this radio is song. right up your alley. And when I went on to IMDb and I was looking at the um, the comments, you know, the user reviews. 42 reviews, and every single one of them said this is fan- this is wow. amazing. This is fantastic. Not one person had anything bad to say about so it. So you're going to watch more. I am going to watch it more. It, it is, you know, like when, when you have thin premises, sometimes like, you think, how is it going to be in the second season, third season? Can it make it to six seasons when it's just the – But, I mean, Gilligan's Island, Bewitched, <laughs> the, <Pop> Rock. the <laughs> Munsters. I mean, like these are all things and that, that – I you, would think you'd be able to explore – Regular situation comedy things. Is yes, they're animated music. Are the little short bits sometimes? Are they long numbers? Or it's a little bit, but it's a little bit of both. There's some where like someone will just break out into like one or two bars, yeah. and then they'll they'll have other like where everybody is singing yeah. and dancing, and it doesn't really make much. I, I can't quite figure out if she's really if this it must happen within a microsecond in her head right. because when she comes back everybody's right back where they right. were so it's, it's but it's, it's fascinating you can relate to that I, <laughs> <laughs> the mini blackout <laughs> yeah. um, but Jane Levy is, is a delight and everybody in it is, is just wonderful and everybody can sing and you didn't realize Peter Gallagher plays um, her father who has a stroke and he can't yeah, communicate guys and dolls or something on Broadway yeah. I was just going to say it reminds me of Moulin Rouge is this idea that we're that, that we all know all this music yes. and using it as as a way to weave the tapestry. Exactly, it's, exactly. It's, it's, it's been done before, but it's, it feels like there's a new resurgence of it, and I'm all for it. Yes. So that is uh, Zoe's extraordinary playlist, a musical sitcom, if you will. Yeah. On NBC. Mondays uh-huh. on NBC. All right, great. All right, let's move on, Blake, to number eight. Number eight. Uh, let's talk about Megxit. Oh, oh it's God, hard. we got so much. This shouldn't just be a segment. This should be a four-hour special. <laughs> <laughs> so for those that have been living under a rock, um, it was announced on January 8th that Meghan Markle, Markle. and well, Prince Harry are stepping down. Of yeah, are stepping down as senior members of the British royal family. Step- Potentially, we haven't really worked out all the details. They're moving yet. away from what was the what was the phrase from their from their senior royal duties. Yeah. So what do you think of that? Do you care? I really don't care. I mean, I was thinking. <laughs> well, I was thinking it's about, everywhere. You have to talk about. I mean, it. I do hate that our you know royal historian isn't here to discuss this. Oh, oh <laughs> please! <laughs> but um, they they say that they wanted they'd be financially independent, meaning that they won't take any money from taxpayers. That's to make the people of uh, England not hate them for doing this, right? And they plan to split their time between the UK and North America. Now, listen, the thing about that is, is, you know, this is a boy who watched his mother die from being p- harassed by the press. And so for him to want to save his family and not do go, go through that again is commendable. I, I, I believe. And the fact that the British press has been so nasty to her. Right. And, you know, they say that it's, it's probably racist. It's probably, you know, whatever it is they have. You know, I just saw an article the other day that had um, side by side. Uh, stories about um, Kate and Megan, and it will be like, I saw that. yeah, and it will be like Kate um, get, is eating avocados, be, and then it'll be like Megan's taking all the avocado crops, and like you know, it's like, <laughs> like you know, like like they'll say like whatever Kate does, is, you know, she's wearing a, a sparkly tiara. Why is she wearing the tiaras? That you know, like it's like the the, the two the, she is held up to an impossible standard, yes. and I don't blame them for wanting to get away from. I it. don't think they're ever gonna like need or want for money. Or or fame like they're can, always can I point be... counterpoint you yeah. for a minute because I, I ultimately want everyone to be happy and they should yeah. do whatever they think is safe however what it, I'm just it's that the 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 drug of fame and I have not experienced it so I can't speak to it um but didn't she know 
that she was marrying into the royal family? Right. Didn't she visit and see the quarters she'd be living in? Didn't she? You know, you, I always feel like, you know, when you see like E! True Hollywood stories or biographies of celebrities, they always seem to stumble at the same place. Like they're, they're on the high, top of the world and they lost everything. Or, you know, the, the, the price of fame was too high. Now, again, if it's too high and she's in trouble, I say move on, live your life. But didn't she get all the fame and now she's using that fame mm, or, yes, and, 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 or do we live in a world where being a royal isn't famous enough no like she can't drive like 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 they, they, you know elton john private jets like like you can live a life they can live a life those two can live a life more famous but on their own without any restrictions than if they were to actually pay homage to by the way and i'm not pro monarchy what i'm saying is that every that, that she is treated different right. than every other royal well, she couldn't have anticipated that. no she, there's no way because she probably thought she was going to be like a kate. kate yeah she probably thought that, that the, the press was going to fall over right. and love her and everyone was everywhere well she and went. it seems like they did in the beginning right and then it just like turned i don't know and I, is the british press like worse than the american press? Oh, yes. much worse much much Ugh. worse Yes, um, but I and the other thing is 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 um, it's 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 amazing. This is a whole other topic. Uh, uh, the obsession, the fantasy that we throw upon the royal family, yeah. Because her wedding, and I'm not saying it's good or bad. It just it is like our, our as Americans, you know, we don't get we don't really see the negative. We just think, oh, the fairy tale wedding. I was always excited that there was a person of color in the royal yes, no, line. And, and, and I think that, I think that people bit. thought that in the beginning, but I also think that you know Harry. Um, we've wanted some. We've wanted Harry to fall in love for so long. We've wanted him to ha settle down mm -hmm. for so many, you know, decades now. That's big of you because I know when he broke up with you, you weren't saying <laughs> that at first. You were a little resentful at first. So <laughs> admit it. But I also think too that once she had a child, that everything changes too. Yeah. And I think the, your priorities change. I yeah. want everyone to be happy. Megxit with love. Right. And uh, yeah. Okay. All right, we have story to go. developing. Story developing. Stay tuned. <laughs> it's I, I, my favorite thing. Whenever there's anything, there's always some kind of ugly British woman going, "Hello, I'm the British royal watcher for CBS News." <laughs> you never see until there's a wedding or a breakup. Yes, well, Harry, of course, loves a crumpet. Anyway, um, that didn't go over well with James. Um, let's do a uh, commercial break before we do. Harry loves a crumpet. <laughs> I didn't have, I'm not, my improv skills are a little loud. I'm catching a cold. Harry loves a crumpet. <laughs> they always give you like detail. Like, oh, he's very like you. You don't. You work in a mall. Why are you telling us what Harry did? <laughs> um. A little uh, trivia question to take us over the break, Blake. Um, so Tanya Tucker <gasps> was Walter, with I'm out. Was with Glenn Campbell for the <sighs> longest time. No, it was a short, fiery time. But yes, 1980. Who? Um, what song did they cover together? Well, I don't think uh, James is going to get this one. Yeah, thanks, you are Blake. listening to the Wow Report on Radio Andy Sirius XM. We'll have the answer to that question and so much more. Uh, don't go away. You're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report. Things that make us go wow. We're back. It's the Wow Report on Radio Andy. I am Tom Campbell here with James St. James, Blake Jacobs. Hi. A shout out to Fenton Bailey, our fearless leader who's away on work in the UK for RuPaul's Drag Race UK. Um, right before the break, we uh, had a little trivia question about Miss Tanya Tucker. I had the pleasure of seeing uh, in Nashville. Yeah. Um, Tanya Tucker and Glenn Campbell were together in 1980. Yep. And they recorded what cover song? Well, I'll have to say 1980. They probably did uh, Whip It by Devo. I like it. I believe uh, they covered Dr a Dream Lover by Bobby Darin and made a duet. That's correct. So imagine that. <laughs> Goodness gracious. That wasn't stacked at all. Uh, no. All right. Well, let's go back to the business where we all we do things equally here, which is we <laughs> count down the top 10 things that make us go, wow. wow. We are now at number seven. Number seven. Oh, it's me again. Mm -hmm. I love when I throw it at myself. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, okay. I was in Nashville. I took an early flight out Monday morning, and I landed in Las Vegas, Nevada. I went straight to the Flamingo. Oh, yeah. Because we are in the final countdown, the two weeks before the January 30th premiere of RuPaul's Drag Race Live. Wait a minute. Does that mean that none of the RuPaul's Drag Race Live girls can be at um, DragCon UK? No, they're there now. They can go back and they're forth. Going, they are going back. Those girls are going to be exhausted. It is the, I'm a little exhausted. It's the busiest time in World of Wonders history, and I am really excited. We've talked a little bit about it, but I'm going to do a whole yeah, segment. Yeah, tell me. Because we, uh, you know... We, tell us how the idea for this came. Well, 
we are delusional here at World of Wonder, which is why RuPaul's Drag Race exists, because we, of course, RuPaul's one of the most talented, fabulous people. Have you seen AJ and the Queen? Why no, we my the God, Queen? yes! Let's all be, I'm not done yet, but let's all binge it. We'll talk about it next week. Okay, yeah. Um, AJ and the Queen, RuPaul's first scripted series, a huge hit on Netflix, please mm-hmm. watch, uh, featuring tons of drag queens and stars of Michael Patrick King. But the, the live show, another thing that Ru's doing is um, a Vegas show. It features six of our queens, Asia O'Hara, uh, um, uh, Cameron Michaels, Naomi Smalls, Evie Oddly, uh, uh, Vanjie, uh, uh, Vanjie, Vanjie, yeah, yeah, yeah. and I'm forgetting somebody because I'm not good at what. I do. Oh, and Derek Barry. Oh yeah, of course. Who's, who's world uh, famous uh, Britney Spears? And yes. who is a Vegas Vegas um, queen? She yeah. better work, bitch. And the idea was to just be in Vegas. Rue appears on videotape, but it's like a real episode of RuPaul's Drag Race at the Flamingo. When I say we're delusional, it's like we want we want there to be drag sitcoms, we want there to be drag movies, and we're like where you know, and, and drag has always had a part. And there's a Piranha Club with a lot of the girls who are in drag race in Las Vegas. So shout out to Hot Chocolate. Thank you. Um, and a, a lot of uh, Vegas and drag seem to work together. Everyone's in drag in in, in Vegas. So this one we. Instead of it just being like um, the uh, Work the World Tour or something, which were fantastic, right. we wanted to make it a little special. It's a residency. It's going to be there from January 30th at Flamingo Vegas to uh, August, August 1st, my August birthday. 1st. And I bet it staying in one place makes it easier to. Well, for the queens, it's great right. because they don't get to. And it's also. But like props and stuff. Yes. And we. Um, yes, yeah, so the set's fantastic. It's video screens like you would not believe. And um, the idea is that over time, in success, we'll keep switching out the cast. So this is I a, was going to say, yeah. So this is a home for the RuPaul's Drag Race Queens. A, you know, a potential home or a timeshare, if you will. Right. Where they can come, get off the road, work for three months, six months, whatever it is, and entertain people from around the country, around the world. And it, it's it's basically a musical version, so we're on trend sure, with sure, the, yeah. the show uh-huh. we're talking about, of RuPaul's Drag Race. And they come in, and um, Brett McLaughlin, who I mentioned earlier, who's Leland. L- who Leland is his performance name, he and RuPaul and myself have written like four or five new songs that are just fun and hilarious. Maybe I made it, which I believe the soundtrack, if it's not available today, we'll look on iTunes and all places. For RuPaul's Drag Race for Live. For RuPaul's Drag Race Live. And Baby I Made It's this big opening number. We oh, have not to cut you off, but everyone is gagging over the new RuPaul song in AJ and the Queen, too. There's a RuPaul album. We have to do a whole RuPaul yeah. show next week. Um, but it's then, uh, Baby I Made It, then there's a really a power ballad about growing up gay called The Mirror Song. Oh, no. And then uh, I'm crying there's, a already. Big, there's a thing that sort of just talks about the, how drag is taken out of the world called Phenomenon, which is like a club banger. Uh-huh. Your type of song. Oh, James. there we go. That's the one you'd perform to. No, club get in the house. And then the, the last <laughs> song is called Losing is the New Winning. And I'll just leave it at that. But um, it's very exciting. It's 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 the workroom. It's a giant video screen, so we can go from you know fantasy to the workroom to the runway. There's funny video clips. There's audience interaction. Uh, a, a, every night, an audience member wins a sickening supply of Anastasia Beverly Hills cosmetics. <laughs> wow! I mean, it's meant if 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 you've. It's, Every night for eight months? It's going to be a sickening supply. Let's not be crazy. Oh. But, um, <laughs> but I, uh, they're wonderful sponsors, and, and they are. We, we they're, love they're Anastasia. Very yeah, generous. yeah. Um, but if, if you are a fan of Drag Race, it's, it's definitely been written for you. It's a love letter to you. And even if you aren't, I imagine. If you aren't, it's, 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 it's meant to take you by the hand through the experience, through the emotion, and through, ultimately, the fierceness. Because they each also do their own sort of talent show number. And I, I'm just blown away. Oh, 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 oh. And our pit crew on RuPaul's Drag Race Live, they can dance. Oh, my God. I just came from dance rehearsals seeing six gorgeous men. Ugh. Wait, wait. Are, do, do we know this? Are these all new pit boys? They're new. They're new. They're new. New pit boys. Okay. I don't know their names yet because I'm too busy. Busy not making oh, eye contact right? with them yeah. because I'm so embarrassed. <laughs> but they're so talented. And, you know, it's that it's that choreography of them, like, on the floor. It's just amazing. So RuPaul's Drag Race Live starting January 30th. Vegas, uh, Flamingo Vegas. Um, we'll be talking about it more, but I encourage you to come to watch, to have fun. January um, 30th, it begins. Yeah, thank you. Exciting. Yeah, um, come for RuPaul's Drag Race Live. Stay for James St. James One Woman Show. <laughs> I've been working on it forever, and I'm here. <laughs> All right, let's move on to number six quick. Number six. 
I watched a documentary on Turner Classic Movies over the weekend, and um, I, I'm pretty I sure I know you, that they even did documentaries on Turner. They, they, Classic they do. Movies. Yeah. Um, uh, this was something called Before Stonewall. It came out in 1984. And did you just happen upon this, or no, no, no? I, I saw. So I, you know, I, I see what's happening in, for the week, and I, I DVR everything. Um, and I DVR'd this, and it was um, made in 1984, so it's 15 years uh-huh. after Stonewall, and it's basically in your senior year. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. When oh, yeah. were you born? 82. Mm, how dare you? Um, <laughs> anyway, so this is all a bunch of older people in the 80s who had been around in the 30s, 40s, 50s, and 60s before Stonewall. And um, a lot of the people... Gay people, presumably. Uh, yeah, all, all gay people. Gay historians, gay, gay, gay gays. Yeah. Um, uh, Kenneth Anger is one of them. Allen Ginsberg is there. Betty Friedan is is a talking head. Um, but mostly it's just, it's just ordinary people telling the stories of what it was like being gay before, you know, when you had to be closeted in, in, in Hollywood or no, just no, no, in the world. Just, just everywhere, okay. just, just all over the place. And, you know, just the stories of like having to sneak into bars and, you know, before there were bars, you know, you had to meet up at, at certain places and it just, and just the, the sort of the, how, how difficult it was, but also they, they all managed to find some, some right. The, the human spirit overcomes whatever exactly. obstacles, love and attraction. And- yes. And it's interesting because so many of those faces I recognize, from when I first moved to New York and they were the bartenders and they were, you know, in, um, you know, they, they were in the East Village and the West Village and you just see them around. But of course, I was such a brat at 18 that I didn't really spend time with them. And right. I did, but I recognized these faces except for one. And there was that when I was growing up in Fort Lauderdale, I would ride my bike to the, I've told the story, I would go to the Marlin Beach Hotel and I couldn't get in, but I would sit now out. Now tell what the Marlin Beach Hotel is though. Well, it was, it was the gay hotel there. It was, there was one gay hotel and it was right on the gay beach, and I would ride to the beach, and I would sit in front of it, and I would just watch everybody walk, go in and out. Right. And, you know, sometimes people would talk to me, and sometimes they wouldn't. But I was just sitting there like little Jimmy, just soaking up totally. gay culture. And there was an old man who would sit with me every day, and his name was Harry. And he had been in the—he t- would talk about how he'd been in the military his whole life, and this was the first time that he could really come out, and he could uh-huh. really be a part. And he he was in his 70s, and I was in my teens, mm-hmm. and it was, an unli- it was like AJ and the Queen. It was an unlike— <laughs> It was an <laughs> unlikely friendship, but you know, like every week we would get together and he would just tell me stories and I'd tell him what was going on with the kids and da da da. And we would just sit and talk and he was in this. And I haven't thought about Harry in 30 years at least. And there he was with his little flat top. You're kidding. And he was, he was, it was, yeah. So you were at the epicenter of gay culture even, even before me, you knew even it. Before. Wait, before you had a driver's license. <laughs> but you know, because I mean, Fort Lauderdale was, was a, it is now, it's still Wilton Manors, but back then it was a gay mecca because there was there was the gay hotel and there were some gay mega clubs and so people would come from New York all the time and they would go New York Fort Lauderdale and then Key West because Key West was the other gay destination. I'm going to seek this out. It's called what's it called? It's called now? After Stonewall and it's um it's really Before Stonewall. I mean yeah oh yeah yeah. Blah, 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 blah. It's called Before Stonewall, and it's on Turner Classic Movies, and I'm sure you can stream it because yeah. it's just fascinating. I and wonder who the filmmakers were. Thank them for uh, capturing that. Yeah, right? yeah, it's interesting. All right. Um, let's uh, move on along. Top ten things that made us go wow. Number five. Number five. Um, that's me. Hi. Hi. Hi, Hi honey boy. Like- um, I saw Honey Boy last but, night. You know, we've been wanting to see this forever. I have been. It is um, it's a feature film. Yeah, Shia LaBeouf. It premiered at right. S- it premiered at Sundance in 2019. Standing ovation. Yeah. Um, it's based on a screenplay by Shia LaBeouf. He, wait, he it's kind he, of about he, his yeah, childhood. Yeah, right? he it's, stars in it. He he wrote it and he did he direct it or he, he produced didn't it? direct. He it. produced it though, uh, right? Maybe I don't talking? I don't know, but he didn't direct because. Steven and I, my roommate, when we were watching it last night, we were like, oh, I thought he directed this, but he wrote it. Um, He started writing this screenplay after he was arrested in July 2017 in Savannah. Yeah. And um, they told him that he had PTSD. So, anyway, the movie flashes back between 1995 and 2005. 2005 was when he was really blowing up, you know, Transformers, all that stuff. 1995 was when. He was living with his dad, who was a, a former alcoholic and just, like, really abusive. I think he wanted to be a performer and never was. So he kind of took that out on his and son. Wait, <laughs> but um, isn't, well, and, isn't, isn't, wait, isn't the shtick, though, that, that he plays his father? Yeah, Shia yeah. LaBeouf plays his father. Yes. 
And um, he actually got his dad to sign the rights agreement by telling him that Mel Gibson <laughs> would be playing him, <laughs> even though Mel Gibson like had turned it down. <laughs> it, how, how do you feel at the end of it? Is it, it, is it a feel-good movie? Or is it ends, depressing? It ends well. I mean, it wraps it up. Has some hope. Yeah. And um, FKA Twigs is in this, who had previously dated Shia LaBeouf. Right, I remember that. I don't really get her character. Like, she was just a girl that was kind of like his friend at their hotel where her, him and his dad lived. Mm -hmm. And she was, like, way older. older. Like, at parts, me and Steven were like, are they going to do it? Well, it's, you know, Shia is an interesting character because he is, you know, a, a powerhouse of an actor. Really, yeah. when you get, I mean, there's some some of his um, movies have been really spectacular. He also and we make fun of him. We a make lot, fun of him because but, he can be a little pretentious. Like sometimes. when he watched all of his movies and cried. And, right, and he does like little performance art things. He had the bag over his head yeah. for a long time, saying, "I'm not famous anymore," mm -hmm. or something but like I that. But I think a lot of that was like whenever he was going through stuff and was just like right. acting out, and it's that drug of fame. Again. Again, like Transformers, biggest movie. Was he the biggest movie star draw in the world for that moment? Yeah, but he's also done a lot of little tiny no, independent movies that really, I mean, he's, he is just incredible an actor. Wasn't Project, incredible Green, Project Greenlight, that reality show on HBO about making a movie, isn't that right? where we first heard about him? Is it? Wasn't he? Well, he was on Even Stevens oh, back right, in the day yes. on uh -huh. uh, I didn't know him from the that. Disney Channel. Mm, right. All right. Well, and so you recommend this everyone well, he to everyone go out. Holes. Remember Holes? Holes is where he was yeah. his first big movie. That was a good but movie, But that was even it? after Even Stevens. He got that because he was a big. Right, yes. Even Stevens was around the time of Lizzie McGuire. Thank you for putting that in a You're historical welcome. context for our audience. <laughs> um, so the movie is Honey Boy. It's playing in theaters? No, it's. I think it's already out of theaters. I think you can get it on Vudu and. and so uh, Google Honey Boy. Yeah. It's an Watch Amazon Holes Prime Street. movie. Amazon, okay. Yes. Do you have Amazon Prime yet, James? No. He can't afford it. I said I was going to pay for it. Would you just let me it? <laughs> would you? Yes, I would. would. Yes, would you I would. Just give me, give me 20 no, bucks right now. No, we will now. sit down at the computer and we'll click it. I don't want that 20 bucks. <laughs> um, do, Before we go to break, yeah, I yeah. do want to say um, I hope people can come to RuPaul's DragCon in L.A. Right. If you're not in the U.K., there right. is a chance if you can come to LA. It's May first, second, and third. Yes. is it? That's at early this LA time. LA Convention Center. Oh yes. dear, that means I got to get tickets are already on sale at RuPaul'sDragCon.com. I got to start getting ready. I've got to start getting my T-shirts and you, things. You need to start carving some uh, apple heads for your merch <laughs> or whatever you do. Some corn husk dolls. <laughs> that would be hot. By that the way, that would be. <laughs> I'll help. Well, James St. James getting more and more wizened by the day. <laughs> All right, so uh, the countdown continues. Don't go anywhere. You're listening to. The Wow Report on Radio Andy, Sirius XM. You're listening to World of Wonders Wow Report. Things that make us go wow. Hey, welcome back. It's The Wow Report on Radio Andy, Sirius XM. Uh, coming to you from Hollywood, California, headquarters at World of Wonder. I'm Tom Campbell with James St. James, Blake Jacobs. Hi, hi. And we are in the midst of counting down the top 10 things that made us go wow, wow this very week. And now we're at number three. Throwing to me. Um... We're at number four, Benton. Oh, I did it. Four. We're at number, and we're at number four. <laughs> number four. Sound the alarm. Five along fire. Bruce Springsteen's hot, 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 hot. Hot, hot, hot. <laughs> kind of look alike son. Woo, he is a. Sam Springsteen. Scorcher. Um, just. Stars trap. Uh, graduated from like the, the fire academy in Jersey City. And and his his famous parents attended the ceremony. He kind of looks like Andy Samberg a little bit too. Yes, uh -huh. he does. And he's got a big lantern jaw in a beautiful way. Bruce looks great. And um, he's, you know, none of Bruce's three children, he's the youngest, got have a big nose. gone into show business. Um, but his daughter is a world-famous equestrian rider, isn't oh, she? I well. believe she's uh, with Athena uh, uh, Onassis. Wait, no all three of them didn't go into? Did not go into show business. But I, I can imagine. Oh, look at them there, my God. They had money for... Uh, for, for for riding lessons, they, they probably did. But they could have they could have been trust fund brats, and they could have you know right. But they all. And he's a blue collar. You know, I mean, firemen are salt of the earth. It's hard not to be 
Was he born in the USA? Thank you. Yes, of course he was. <laughs> Is he born hard, to run? It's hard not to be sort of attracted to firemen in general, no, no yeah. matter what they look like, just because of what they do for a living. They're just, their yeah. community. You see them here in LA, you know, going to the grocery store with the fire truck and they're all going down the aisle. But um, You do? I, I've never seen that. I don't have, you haven't? No. Oh my God. <laughs> like, they take out, like, like it's like you think they would, someone would buy them like a hybrid. But they, <laughs> no, they take the truck out, maybe they have to keep the, keep the oil. Where do you go? Like where, where? pavilions. Really? You see them like shopping with carts That's and routes. Hot. It is hot. <laughs> and they're really doing stuff. Um, but that's not time for another fantasy. But I, this was a real wake up call for me because the last time I saw Sam Springsteen was probably 20 years ago, which is only, only 2000, at Barney's. I was at Barney's once, and Barney and Bruce Springsteen was walking around, and he had little kids with him. And I thought, like, this can't be his kid because his kid's 26, and he would be, I'm like, six years old. So. Well, I've been doing almost nothing for the past 20 years. <laughs> Bruce Springsteen has done a few things, raised some children, and now they're, they're saving the world. That's crazy. He, now, he, he, oh, there he is as a young, as a child. Yes. Yeah. Who um, was he married to? Bruce? Yeah. Patty? Scalia. Who was his? He's right there. Scalia. What I love Sc is... Uh, Patty Scalia. Scal what is it? I have to... Uh, it's just, uh, Scaff... Scaffield. Scaff... Scaffield. Right here. Scaff Can you read that? S-C-I-A-L-F-A. It's so funny. We just know who she is. We yeah. don't even know her last name. Because he was married to uh, that other redhead for a little bit. Remember? She was on Sisters... Oh my God, we're blanking out. We'll find it out. She was in his band. She was always the girl in the videos, and you sort of. And he married a girl who had red hair too. And you thought, oh, sh I thought he was her for a minute, and like no. And then he broke up with the first wife, and he married her, and they've had this beautiful family. What I did by doing an Instagram search is you start to find out things like Bruce Springsteen's Christmas cards, his family Christmas card, <laughs> Julianne Phillips, Julianne Phillips. I don't remember Julianne. Phillips. Um, she was the youngest sister in Sisters, um, with with the. Uh, who are the other sisters? It was a Seal Award. It was oh, on yeah. NBC. Uh -huh. I remember Susie that Kurtz. show. Susie Kurtz, yes. yes. And they always started in a sauna. But it was different than brothers and sisters, totally. right? Totally. It's sisters. Oh, yeah. <laughs> sisters <laughs> ended in 96. But it was, it was uh, yeah, very well known for that. It was, it was scandy because they. Oh, you forgot Patricia Callenberg. Oh, I didn't forget her. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Sam Springsteen, if you haven't, check him out. Uh, and uh, Jersey City's uh, f uh, one of Jersey City's finest. So. Go for it. All right, we're counting down the top 10 things that made us go wow, and we have reached number three, James and James. Number three. Ladies and gentlemen, Dragman. Da 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 Dragman. Um, it's a book. It's a book. It's a, it's a, um, a uh, graphic novel. It's a graphic novel that, oh, that comes out in April, and we got an advanced copy at World of Wonder because we are all things drag. So Everyone knows <laughs> if it's got drag in the title, send it to World of Wonder. Um, it's, but you uh, like it. It's fantastic. It's by Stephen Appleby, a British um, cartoonist, and it, the, the, it's Drag Man and Dog Girl is, uh, is his uh, sidekick. And Drag Man, um, uh, 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 August Crimp has a secret life. He's a man who likes to wear women's clothes, and when he puts on a dress, he can fly. Um, but confused by his obsession and terrified of ridicule and rejection, he tells no one, not even his wife, until one day a little girl falls from the rooftop cafe at an art museum, and August must fly up to save her, watched by hundreds of people. Now there is no turning back, and when evil stalks the city, August must choose. Will he embrace the power of flight and as, as his alter ego drag man, or forever hide in the shadows? Um, it's Dog Girl is, his, is a dog, who's, who is a girl who turns into a dog, and she they fly around the city, and, and Anytime he puts on a dress, he can fly, which is a nice metaphor. I love it. Um, and he has to hide it, but he and ultimately ends up embracing his drag now character. Have you Googled to see what Stephen looks like? Stephen Appleby, the uh, author? I have not. I'm surprised that be. you didn't do it. The um, and Did you get this from the publisher or from Stephen directly? Uh, I believe Stephen directly sent it to us. Can you do us a favor? Is that him in drag? I think so, yes. <laughs> nice. At the Carlton Arms in 2016. Sweet. You should... Uh, right after this, make sure Stephen gets invited to DragCon. Oh yeah, right? uh huh. Just in case, do you think he lives? And get your copy signed. Well, I'm not going to be at DragCon UK because it's started right now. Well, but he could. Oh yeah, because he's in the UK. Sorry, sorry, yeah. sorry. I had a brain fart. But I mean, you could still go to DragCon LA, May first, second, and third. 
but we're not gonna yes pay for you're you're worse at the plugs than fenton you are so obvious like <laughs> people are turning off they come here for an authentic conversation <laughs> <laughs> and that's why i think squarespace is it no okay. <laughs> drag man by stephen appleby coming in, uh, in april so be on the lookout for it it's really funny and it's real fun and it's a uh, it's very easy it's cartoons it's sweet it looks super cute it's adorable all right uh moving on to number two blake Number two. Well, I was listening to the radio on the way to work the other day, and they were talking about the best sellers in each state for Walmart. Walmart stores across the nation, each uh-huh. state's best. number one best-selling thing. Could it be diapers? Is it that dog? Yes. Oh my. God. Now you could. <laughs> you you're from New Hampshire, right? I am. I am. What well, do you? Th- I would say it'd be like a, a a blanket, some sort of mittens or some sort of uh, boots. From from New Hampshire. I'm gonna say diapers. Uh, no, it's actually Titanic on Blu-ray. What? <laughs> More people buy Titanic on Blu-ray than diapers in New Hampshire. Now okay. that explains a lot. The number one seller in Texas, Equate Maximum Strength Sensitive Extra Whitening Toothpaste. Now this just means this doesn't mean that like this was the best. Su- this means like these products yeah. are sold the most of these products. Not out of the whole store, but out of the products all the world, more people buy Titanic in New Hampshire than in, in, in any India. other state. Right, right. Okay. Okay. Um, Florida. Yeah. It's kind of classic. Florida. James. Great Value and Starkiss Chunk Light Tuna. Wow, oh my God, that is great. I, have I, I love my chunky <laughs> And then for your <laughs> Michigan <laughs> side, yeah. Welch's Concord Grape Jelly. You know, people do love Welch's in Michigan. You know what Welch's Grape Juice does? It turns white bread into a donut. <laughs> That's what it does. Let's just be honest. Okay. Um, I'm from Arkansas. Yeah. Our, ours was the Instant Vortex Six Quart Air Fryer. Oh, you know, well, my sister makes a lot of sense. My sister just got an air fryer and she swears by it. She loves that I have air fryer. I one and I don't really Has she fed you anything it. from her air fryer? She doesn't feed me any shit. What about California? California? The Nintendo Switch console. Huh. huh. Well, because, right. yeah, I'm sure. What, now, about, what about Nevada? Nevada? That would be Swiss <laughs> Miss chocolate milk <laughs> with mini marshmallows. Swiss Miss milk chocolate flavor reduced. Reduced calorie hot cocoa mix. Well, let's still, you know, let's, let's hot just chocolate. Uh, no, I'm sorry, I want to keep going for a second here, and you can cut this, but um, like New York. New York is. Uh, yeah, people want to know. Sure. Johnson's Creamy Oil Moisturizing Baby Body Lotion. Huh. What about New Jersey? I don't know. What about Alaska? Alaska, Jasmine Rice. Huh. Oh my God, my drag persona, Jasmine. <laughs> <laughs> it's a. Uh, I. Didn't get a very my, the worst mark I got in college was in statistics. I don't understand how this. I don't really understand the science behind this at all. Like, how would you even begin to figure this out? But I got a ninety eight in B stat business all right. statistics. All right, so so that, that's glad this is your segment. <laughs> <laughs> I also have like the best sellers at Walmart for the past ten years. Oh, let's do it. Do you know what last year's best seller was? Diapers. The Instant Pot. Everyone's buying Instant Pot. What's you know, Instant Pot? It's that like deep fryer. Or, well, not deep fryer. It's like a, a crock pot thing. Okay. It's okay. a f- pressure cooker. A pressure cooker, but safe. You bought a pre- you bought one, didn't you? I have one. Huh. They're all the rage. <laughs> what 2018, else? it was like a 32-inch TV. For 2016 and 17, both years, Ozark Trail 30-ounce insulated stainless steel tumbler. Oh, so you're going to have it in my plastic cup. Right. I'm so guilty. That's Wait, good. what is that? That's like a, a travel mug. Right. It's and like, that was the biggest seller? Yes, right. People were trying to not to reduce and reuse. Walmart people were trying yes. not to reduce. Don't, don't. I'm so, oh, you, I'm sorry. Oh, whoops. You shop where you get, uh, being from a rural place, you go where you can find stuff. There's not a lot of options. It's true. It's totally, true. yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, 2010, it was mead composition notebooks, wide rolled. I love it. I have a mead. I have many meads. Oh, isn't this a blast from the past? 2011. Their bestseller was an Apple iPod Touch 8 gigabyte. Just now we have like 256 gigabytes, you know? They don't even make iPods anymore. Right. It was just for the, at the peak of obsolescence. Right. Actually, I've heard that iPods are coming back. That people, it, it's like a retro thing. and it's people like are, vinyl. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Will CDs ever come back? Because I've got a crap load in my garage. I do, space. too. I don't, have, I don't even have a CD player anymore. I don't, yeah. 
All right. Hey, when everyone wants to give you – to take a screener, an Oscar screener, it's like, I don't have a DVD player, bitch. <laughs> yeah. Neither does my computer. I don't have a DVD player anymore either. All right. Speaking of the Oscars, oh, my God, preview, preview. We're about to reveal our number one thing this week that made us go, wow. Uh, we'll be right back to this quick break. You're listening to The Wow Report on Radio Andy, Sirius XM. You're listening to World of Wonders, Wow Report. Things that make us go wow. And we're back. Hi there. It's Tom Campbell on the Wow Report. I'm here with James St. James, Blake Jacobs, uh, we're sending our love across the ocean, across the pond to Fenton Bailey, our fearless leader, who's at RuPaul's Drag Race UK. Um, we have come to the point in our broadcast where we reveal the number one thing that made us go wow. wow. Number one. And these are some things that really made me go wild this week because, as on, you know... They n uh, announced Oscar nominations on Monday. Well, that's what I was just about to say. There were some uh, noticeable, noticeable snubs this year that we really um, are, are devastating. Number one uh, on the list is Jennifer Lopez, who we thought for sure was going to get a Best Supporting uh, nomination for Hustlers. You know, and yeah. I think she thought she was going to get it. And... Um, she was kind of the female Brad Pitt this year, right? Because she's someone that's so famous, that's so beautiful, that we love, that's part of the pop culture, J-Lo. And she finally did something that people, even though I loved uh, 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 Boy Next Door. But, um, uh, <laughs> Boy Next Door, Boy Next Door. <laughs> Made in Manhattan. Oh! Yes, I, lo I love those movies. No. Um, but she did she something. She something with a little gravitas. Yes. And Hustlers was this female empowerment movie mm -hmm. that, you know, if it, you know, I, I hate to put the sexist thing, but like if it had been like a, you know, it it was kind of like um, those 60s like war movies or something, but it was with you know, an ensemble female cast yes. living through a tragedy. Yeah, and it was, I think it was one of the first time we've, we've ever seen Jennifer in this light, where we where she's not sort of, you know, she she can, she's, her acting is a little fluffy, and this was something that was really gritty yes. and really amazing, yeah. and it was like a whole new Jennifer, and she's really on a career high right now anyway. She's been doing, you know, her, her Vegas thing. She's been, she's just, it seems like... Yeah, it's, it's the Super Bowl is coming, and it seems like we're we're just seeing her in a different yeah. way. We were sort of hoping for it; it didn't happen. Um, Lupita Nyong'o is another one who, for us, we thought that that was it was an amazing performance. It was a very it was different. It was sort of out of the box. That didn't happen. There feel like a big campaign behind it too. I saw a lot of press. Yeah, and, and us was a weird. It was Jordan Peele, right? Yeah, and it was a little bit of a of a sophomore slump, just perceptually from uh, Get Out. Get, Get out. out, yeah. And so it, yeah. it, it didn't, people it tiptoed didn't, away. It didn't happen. Robert De Niro, everyone thought was going to get it for The Irishman, uh -huh. right? Uh, did not what happen. What about Adam Sandler? Adam Sandler is not, well, see, I have a feeling that Adam Sandler, it, it, apparently it was an amazing performance. It's an, it's an amazing movie, and it's, it's another, like, we see Adam in a whole new light. Right. But I think after a career of, of, Happy uh, how to pr I now pronounce you Chuck and Larry. Yeah, and but that's the whole uh, no, no, that's no. The sentimental vote thing. But that's but the but the Oscars don't work like that. And you have to have he's got to have a couple more under his belt before I think they give it to him. And I'm a dummy. He's Precious Gems Netflix. Uncut Gems. Uncut, Uncut Gems. Gems. No, it's, I, it's Amazon Prime, but it okay. was it was on um it's it's streaming it's as well. It also it's got in a lot theaters. of publicity a lot of yeah. paid advertising yeah but i don't think the he, the oscar was ready to nope. to give it to him eddie murphy another uh shocking well another dolomite show. didn't get any nominated Nothing. for anything Nothing. neither did the farewell yeah it's the same like four or five movies and they got all the nominations yeah like, you know you know frozen 2 uh everyone thought was going to get a nomination it didn't get anything no but I, the not song even for did song. and i can't remember how that song went and uh, into the end no <laughs> <laughs> um but I thought we well, sing a song. We never have to worry about the rights being infringed because <laughs> we never hit any of the notes. <laughs> um, but I was convinced that it was going to come down to Beyonce for Lion King versus Taylor Swift for Cats, oh. and neither one of those got nominated. Okay, we do the Wowies, I know, but I think for the Wow Report, we need to do the Gay Oscars. Oh, right. Wait, it's, it's I, sort of like when they do the fake Coachella lists. You know, oh, the, the, yeah, the Coachella yeah, uh -huh, uh -huh. You need to do. A film. The gay, cause, like, like that, I would tune in for that. <laughs> I'm not going to tune in for like Adam Driver, who's wonderful, versus the other <laughs> white guy. You, know? you aren't going to, you're going to watch. You'll totally be there. It sounds super dull this year. I hate to say no, it. No, it's, it's again, yes, once again, year. we've got the, um, <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, Aquafina is another one that, that who won the Golden Globe, and we thought for yeah. Best Supporting Actress, we thought she was going to get it. She didn't. But uh, how? And then this is against statistics and stuff. But 
who, are people people aren't being purposely racist and purposely no, sexist. No, 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 no. It's no, just no. somehow the and, the and the academy. I've seen stories has gone to great efforts and and still it's, and they it's, did. It, they have to, to increase the the, the minority <clears throat> after after Oscar so white. Remember and, and, that right. one year. The next yeah. year and they. It's changed. a long. It's a long road. It's it's not like overnight. But this is the kind of the whitest Oscars so white and and. But but wait, wait another one another Oscar's big so one. Dull, I think, is better than no, Oscar. No, you so guys, right. stop it! It's I, the Oscars. We love the Oscars. It's fabulous. I'll watch them, but we're, come on! We're, no, you love movies. You love movie stars. You love you love fabulous outfits. It's everything you love. Okay, it's also the second year that there hasn't been a woman nominated for best director. Well, here, okay, and here, this is what I want to talk about okay, that's because Greta Gerwig was not nominated, and everyone's like, "Oh my God, poor Greta!" And, 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 you know, no. She didn't get nominated because she didn't deserve to be nominated because the directing of that movie, everything about the movie is fantastic yep. except for the directing. And, uh, you know, she did get a nomination for screenplay. I've said it before. I'll say it again. My friend Richie's 11-year-old daughter said. It's confusing. It was confusing. It was. It was. <laughs> but the, the, the performances. And she is an Academy voter. Right. The, the performances are amazing, and the performances did get no- nominated, yep. and the screenplay did get nominated. So you felt the cinematography did get nominated. The costumes got nominated, but I don't think Greta deserved a, a director. And I'm just, I'm going down. I'm that's my hill to die on. There we go. All well, right. guys, we have reached that time. Unfortunately, we're out of time. Thank you for keeping the Wow Report alive. Thanks for making me go wow, you guys. I really mean it. Thank you, um, Tom. Thank you. And now, Drag Race UK happening right now. <laughs> in uh, what am I, chopped liver? <laughs> Thank you, Tom. Yes, thank you, Tom. Well, you know, I did a lot of heavy, heavy lifting. I had to count down in order, which I almost did well. Um, uh, and I do, you, if, if, if you're looking for oh, something. Oh, Tom to, gets loud and I get a whisper. If you're looking for something to binge, may I remind you, AJ and the Queen starring RuPaul and 23, 24 of the RuPaul's Drag Race Queens making amazing cameos and more is streaming on Netflix. Um, until next time. Let's get together and go out and do something that makes the world go wow. Wow. Bye.